Assalamualaikum Abangan Bam. Good morning, hello and welcome to our 34th mnemonic in internal medicine. I greet you in the awesome name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at just concepts in pulmonology. This is a video illustrating part one of this. We'll be focusing on approaching etiologies in pulmonology from an anatomical perspective and from a pathophysiological perspective. But first up a scripture to encourage you guys. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 6 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Let's say that again. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Right? If you want to be truly content and happy in life, the only way to do this is to have a right relationship with God, to seek Him and to pursue Him actively and watch how happy and content you will become. A quick joke. One day, a school and a fever, both old friends, walked separately into a bar. The school noticed the fever and uh, he said, Hey, fever! The fever noticed the school and said, Hi, school! <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So from a purely um, anatomical perspective and a conceptual framework for an anatomical perspective for pulmonology, you can think of um, um, pathology as affecting the lungs in terms of whether it affects the airway, the parenchyma, the vasculature, or the pleura. So you may ask me what affects the airway. Well, notorious uh, examples are COPD, asthma, bronchiectasis, foreign body aspiration, bronchitis, or Bluetooth pneumonia, like in rheumatoid arthritis, and so forth. What affects the parenchyma? Well, pneumonia. And we know that we can classify pneumonia based on whether it's community acquired, aspiration, pneumonia in immunocompromised, nosocomial, VAP and HAP. VAP stands for ventilator associated and hospital mm, or healthcare associated. So let's just talk about pneumonia for a bit. Community acquired pneumonia we can separate into being viral, bacterial, atypical, and fungal. Examples of bacterial, the pneumonia, the uh, notorious uh, Cytococcus pneumoniae, Staph aureus, Haemophilus, and Marxella catarralis. Atypicals like Mycoplasma, Chlamydia, Lechinella, TB, 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 and more TB. Right? Uh, community acquired medicine resistant Staph aureus. Viral examples, uh, the notorious COVID pneumonia, don't forget that. Then influenza, parainfluenza, metonymal virus, respiratory syncytial virus, adenovirus. Fungal examples, blastomycosis, cryptococcus, and histoplasmosis. Aspiration pneumonia is usually polybacterial, including anaerobes like bacteroides, peptostetococcus, fusobacterium, etc., as well as chemical pneumonitis, especially in those uh, patients who come in with parasuicide attempts, you know, um, uh, ingested paraffin. All right. And the pneumonia and immunocompromised, we know there's a whole lot of causes of that, especially to consider PCP or what was called PCP, now called pneumocystis gerevitzi pneumonia, right? Nosocomial pneumonia begins in non-intubated patients within 48 hours of admission, usually polybacterial, with staph aureus and pseudomonas originosa and enterobacteria sea, like Klebs, uh, uh, e. coli, Seracia, Haemophilus, uh, Acinetobacter, and viral causes like influenza as well. VAP is the term we use for ventilator-associated pneumonia, typically beginning within or, or after, sorry, 48 hours uh, once the patient's intubated. Healthcare-associated pneumonia, the definition is pneumonia that occurs either within 90 days of hospitalization or two days duration or more, uh, a stay at a nursing home or a visit uh, to an oral puncture care facility or hospital-based clinic or hemodialysis facility or it occurs within three days of receiving antibiotics, chemo or any type of wound care. All right. So we think about parenchyma, we think about pneumonia, but we could also think about other etiologies affecting the parenchyma, example, interstitial lung disease. And we already addressed this in terms of primary ILDs and secondary ILDs. Please refer to my videos on these topics. And the mnemonic for primary ILD is ink lace and secondary ILD is dice. Another etiology affecting the parenchyma is acute respiratory distress syndrome. And you can check out my video on the Berlin criteria on how to diagnose this. Then other etiologies that affect the lungs can include those which affect the vasculature. To this end, we speak to pulmonary hypertension. And in our video, in our 33rd mnemonic, we covered pulmonary hypertension classification as per the WHO. Nice to have a look at that. And other etiologies that affect the vasculature is the, um, you know, pulmonary embolism. What affects the pleura? Pleural effusions, and the way we categorize those is based on lights criteria, right? Where we, we, we segregate them into either exudative or transudative and the respective etiologies. And we also look at the ratio of uh, uh, protein and LDH in the pleural fluid versus the serum. And of course, look at the LDH uh, in the pleural fluid. And if it's greater than two thirds of the serum value, then that would obviously classify it as exudate, right? That's lights criteria. 
Okay, so in terms of the pathophysiological classification, we can say that um, diseases in pulmonology fit into either one of these five large categories. So either it's consolidation, which speaks to lobe pneumonia, or it's an effusion, which, as we say, we use last criteria to segregate or, or, or separate them, sorry, into either exudative or translative ideologies and work from there. Fibrosis is usually uh, in the way of IPF, so idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. But note that any secondary cause of lung disease, if it's long-standing, can result in fibrosis, uh, fibrosis in some way, shape, or form. For instance, long-standing asthma, or if you've got uh, um, long-standing repetitive infection, can give rise to fibrosis and bronchiectasis. Suppressive causes, we know, example, lung abscess, bronchiectasis, and check out the video on bronchiectasis, which speaks to etiologies in bronchiectasis. The mnemonic day is OK, chaps. And then, of course, obstructive etiologies like COPD or asthma. All right, so there you have it, guys. Concepts in pulmonology in terms of what can affect the lungs. Is it either affecting the airway, the parenchyma, the vasculature, and the pleura? And in terms of the pathophysiology, is it consolidation, effusion, fibrosis, suppuration, or obstructive in nature? God bless you, and have yourself a wonderful day.